Welcome everybody. My name is Chris Kadowski and I am the owner of Rebuilt. This is a presentation on fascia, what it is and why you need to care for it. More importantly, what we're going to do is we are going to understand what is mechanistically true in the human body when it comes to relieving ourselves of myoskeletal pain. Now, I used to be a mobility guru, and basically what I did was I would take balls, bars, bands, I mean, you name it, anything that I could find, the corner of a park bench, etc., in order to get rid of pain in my body. I used to roll on foam rollers. Uh, I mean, you could find me in the mall, uh, maybe somewhere out at a park or something like that, leaning up against a fence in order to get into an area that was painful at the time. Now, several years later, I look at this picture and uh, that's what it reminds me of. And I see it as very barbaric for the most part because I have found much easier and actually pain-free ways to get rid of pain. And you know, I used to tell people that you would have to be uncomfortable in order to become comfortable. Well, now I am starting to care for the body in a much different way that is uh, vastly more productive and it doesn't require going into more pain in order to do that. So first quote of the day, we are looking at Andrew Taylor Still, circa 1899, he said to understand disease one must first look to the fascia. Okay, so you may have heard the term fascia being thrown around maybe in the media once or twice. Dr. Oz might have said it or something like that. Or maybe you heard somebody in the gym say something about fascia and you're just like, okay, connective tissue. Yeah, emerging science must be new. No, uh, I mean, we have been, we as the human race, we've been studying this uh, for quite a while now it is only the last couple of years or so that uh, we were absolutely amazed by some work done by Jean-Claude Gimberteau, finding out that living fascia is actually vastly different than dead fascia. Okay, so we were looking at fascia from cadavers, people that passed away, and we were just like, oh, it's connective tissue, throw it in the garbage. We want to get to the meat, the muscles, the nerves, the bones. That's the good stuff. Well, we find out that fascia is actually the good stuff. And uh, we have been omitting it from our study, our judgment for a very long time. So there are several working definitions for fascia. You could Google this and, I mean, come back with probably 10 to 20 different definitions and Maybe they're going to sound kind of the same. Maybe some of them are vastly different. These come from a very good friend and colleague of mine, Gary Lynham. So we're going to go through what I feel the working definitions of fascia can aptly be characterized. All right. Number one, it's a living web of hydraulic tubes. Okay. That create vital synergy for the body cells and more importantly, movement. Over a hundred times more nerve cells than the brain are in our fascia. Okay, it transmits, receives, and stores mechanical, metabolic, environmental, emotional, and perceptual signals that influence our movement and function. It's very important. Okay, emotional and perceptual. Keep that in the back of your mind. When fascia is stressed, these tubes tighten and stiffen to protect the body like a pressurized water hose. Fascia moves slowly and responds to slow pressurized touch or slow movement. So when I started off doing body work in 2005, I was kind of like the guy that was putting a square peg into a round hole. I figured the harder I would push on an adhesion or something like that, the faster I would open it up. And that wasn't so. Now, the more slow pressurized touch I use, or slow movement, the better the results. And you will see that. 
Every three minutes in motion, the fascia transmits millions of bits of info to the muscular system. The fascia is the greatest supercomputer on earth. Fascia is what senses danger, not nerves, not muscles. Fascia is the reflex action. So when you step on something sharp and your body moves you away from danger, that's not nerve, that's not muscle, that's not reflex, that is fascia protecting you. Fascia audits the, itself through walking. When injured, our first inclination is to stand up and walk around. Fascia protects the head as a priority. Fascia integrates feelings, emotions, and the kinetic information of the world to the neuromusculature. Okay, So fascia tells us how we feel about our environment. If you wake up and you're a same shit, different day type of person, then I can guarantee you, you probably also don't like how you feel. Maybe your joints are rusty. Maybe you have myoskeletal pain that you're unable to get rid of by anybody else's doing. Okay. And, uh, you know, it just baffles you. I don't know why I'm in pain. Could be a lot to do with your emotions and how you view the world. First fact of the day, fascia is the only thing we cannot remove from the body. Seems pretty important. If you can't remove it, we can take a heart out. We can take lungs out. We could take out two thirds of your liver and it'll grow back. Body just says, okay, didn't really need that. I'll just make more then. All right, but you cannot remove fascia from the body unless you are dead. What is fascia made of? Well, approximately 65 to 70% water which is 15 liters around in the human body, fibroblasts, which give it its shape, mastocytes, which aid the human immune system and help secrete hormones, adipocytes, which are fat cells, they reserve energy and cushion our organs, macrophags, which regulate inflammation, they're also a huge part of the immune system, plasmacytes, which help the immune system organize the defense of the body, leukocytes, which are white blood cells that defend against infections, integrins, they are receptors that are adhesive in nature. They stick every cell in our body to the fascia and only respond to mechanical stimuli by sensing vibration. These receptors literally monitor the outside environment and create a report for the fascia to interpret our movement. Sounds super important, right? Telocytes only found in the fascia. These cells maintain stem cell activity, repair tissue, and immune function. Hmm. Pretty important, that one too, huh? Muscle spindle fibers and Golgi tendon organs. These guys measure the rate of force development and they measure how long our muscle tissue is while we move, okay? Glycosaminoglycans, they are molecules that attract and hold water. All right, now if your fascia is mostly made up of water, it's pretty important that they have molecules that attract water, okay? And if your fascia is connected to everything and anything, those integrins are pretty important that they stick to every single cell in the body, okay? What's fascia's role? Fascia will place force and flexibility limits on muscles or a group of muscles within the system. Fascia will prevent muscles and tendons from tearing and will also help prevent hernias. This is because if the muscles were not surrounded by fascia, they would rupture or tear. Okay, so let's think about it. If I use 600 different muscles at different times, then the muscular, neuromuscular movement is going to be very, very awkward or imbalanced, okay? However, if there is just one part that's moving that selectively then recruits muscles when it needs it, that is going to be a lot more stable, a lot more efficient and stronger, okay? This is fascia. Fascia is us. It is our architecture, all right? Fascia helps veins and arteries to open for increased flow. It does the same for lymph nodes and vessels. Fascia gets thicker according to its mechanical demands, increasing the overall load the system can handle. 
This is Wolf's Law. We'll talk about it in a bit. Fascia affects the environment of every living cell and directly affects cellular metabolism. This is our fascia. Okay, the big picture on the left, beautiful crystalline web. The picture on the top right, okay, again, beautiful crystalline fibrous tissue with water and collagen flowing through it. I mean, just absolutely pristine. And then we see fascia from a cadaver on the bottom right. Okay, uh, once again, it just looks like a cotton web sticking to everything. Now here we have damaged fascia, all right? These are scar tissue, adhesions, some trigger points, um, areas that are stuck, okay? That are not receiving the flow of its normal fluid. You can see, you know, there's blood trapped in there. It looks like somebody blew their nose, okay? Real phlegmy, real snotty, thick, okay? No longer pristine and smooth flowing, all right? Fascia 101, it serves to keep everything interconnected. It surrounds everything, even the nerves in the brain, holds the organs in place. Think about it, if you were running and the organs weren't being held in place, that'd be pretty awkward. Heating increases its flexibility, cooling decreases. Here we get to injury, okay? Somebody bumps their knee or sprains their ankle and everybody wants to put ice on the area. All right, but what does ice do? Ice slows things down, right? Ice constricts. Now, I ask people if they're smarter than 4 million years of evolution because if you bump your knee and you get inflamed, your body's trying to heal itself. Why do you want to stop that, okay? It would make sense then that fascia being mostly comprised of water expands when you heat it, which is good and shrinks when you cool it, okay? Think about it, you wake up on a cold day, you can't break out into a run or a sprint very quickly, you need to warm up. But it's, let's say if you wake up in, I don't know, like South Florida during the summer when it's 100 degrees and a lot of humidity, you go outside, you're very, very warm. You can move very, very well, okay? Fascia deforms under load. It forms within the first two weeks of conception and is primarily made of collagen. It's composed of a triple helix pattern that gives it tremendous tensile strength, behaves in accordance to Wolf's Law, which means that it will remodel according to its imposed demands. It is piezoelectric, which means it produces an electrical charge in response to mechanical stress. I'm going to introduce you to fascial maneuvers at the end of this presentation. And what you are going to find is that we work with the body, we work with the fascia mechanically and electrically. We work electrically with our breath and we work mechanically with our movement. This is the only way to unwind and restore your fascial tissue the way nature intended. There is no break in tissue continuity from beginning to end, from core to cuff, from your nose to your toes. You are connected through and through. Biology. All right. And we are looking at the integrins on the outside with those collagen fibers. Okay. We have the plasma membrane. And then on the inside, we have the muscle, bridges, actin, myosin. All right. And then we get into the nucleuses of the cell, and we still see remnants of fascia, okay, right into the nucleus. So super important from a biological perspective, fascia encompasses all. It touches everything in the body. It does not break, it does not separate, all right, through cells, through everything, okay? Fascia is our structure. Fact number two which I just said, got a little bit ahead of myself there. Fascia is our structure. What do you mean by that? Because my bones certainly do stuff, right? Well, not so much. We knew in 1981, Dr. Levin did the first mechanotransduction experiment, finding the bones do not compress with each other or their joint surfaces 
rather bones float. What are bones good for then? They are anchor points and tuning forks. So if you were to break your leg and the doctors couldn't really see a break on an x-ray, they would use a tuning fork and then touch it to your leg. If there was a break, you'd scream in pain, okay? So bones respond to vibration, all right? And then what they do as you walk is tell fascia where you are in the environment or rather where that appendage is, all right? Very important that we understand this. This is the new biology, all right? This is what is mechanistically true in the human body. Everything else that you have quote unquote learned up until this point are just half truths or pointing to the truth. Well, I know my muscles definitely do stuff. Not really, okay? Pain over a three on a scale of 10 is fascia, not muscle. Gibson et al. in 2009 did a study entitled Increased Pain for Muscle Fascia Following Eccentric Exercise, Animal and Human Findings. He injected a solution into sore muscle tissue with no increase in pain. All right, it was an irritant, a glucose solution. Then he injected the same solution into the extracellular matrix, which is the fascia between your skin and your muscle. And guess what? People got increased pain. So it is our fascia that gets sore when we exercise, not our muscle tissue. Okay, mind blown. The, way, the language of our DNA is scalar waves. First scalar wave was discovered by Scottish scientist James Clerk Maxwell in the mid-1800s. Other scientists dismissed them as being too mystical. So they were kind of like forgotten about. Nikolai Tesla found them and by 1904 had plenty of knowledge and experiments underway. There are non-physical forms of all information contained in the scalar waves, okay? They can pass through all objects with ease no matter how dense they are and they are not bound by time. Fascia contains a hundred, I'm sorry, scalar waves contain a hundred times more information than radio waves or millimeter waves. Possibilities for the beneficial use of scalar energy include clean, free energy technology to replace coal and oil fuel sources, the ability to transmute elements including radioactive waste into inert substance, they can harness gravitic forces to create anti-gravity aircraft for space travel and using scalar carrier waves to deliver perfect DNA information to stimulate physical healing from any illness could be a possibility. I got this information from my friends over at blueshield.us. They make instruments that help deter the issues that people get from 5G, all right? So really great products, head over there and check out their stuff, check out their blog, lots of great information. So there are heavy concentrations of fascia that we need to understand, all right? Number one is in the bowels. So 10 times more information goes from our intestines up to our brain than from our brain down to our intestines. This all has to do with fascia. It's one of the greatest concentrations that we have in the body, okay? Our hip flexors, adrenal glands, heart, and lungs are heavily wrapped and connected in fascia. Why? Because that is the engine of our body, all right? Now bear with me here for a second. We move with our hip flexors on our legs. We don't move with our legs, all right? So, there's a huge concentration of fascia in our hip flexors that is attached to our adrenal glands, then it's attached to our heart and lungs. Why? Because that is our emergency switch. If we are being attacked or if something's wrong, okay, our fascia needs a lot of juice in order to run away. And there you go, there you have it. 
our hip flexors, adrenal glands, heart, and lungs are very tightly tied together with fascia. There is also a concentration called the myodural bridge, which is a link between the neck muscles, atlas axis, our brain, and vision. All right, so this is a huge concentration of fascia that we are going to see in just a second. So we have the rectus capitis posterior muscles, the fascia, which is labeled B, cervical dura matter of the spinal cord, and then there are nerve endings linked to optical nerves that measure tension and regulate the flow of cerebrospinal fluid. Very, very important. When somebody says you, you need to have eyes in the back of your head, these are the eyes in the back of your head. All right, like super duper important. All of this information from your eyes and neck muscles transmit to what you see and how your balance is in the outside world. So today, when people are looking down at their devices day after day after day and they have a lot of stress and you're sitting in traffic and you're making poor food choices and you're constantly staring at screens, this area gets inundated with information and we get a lot of tightness, which will lead to headaches, vision problems, and just the overall flow and state of our body because cerebrospinal fluid is very, very important, all right? It is a clear, colorless fluid found within the tissue that surrounds the brain and spinal cord of all vertebrates, all right? It also assists the brain by providing protection, nourishment, and waste removal. It provides hydro, there's that water word again, hydromechanical protection of the neuroaxis through two mechanisms that are way too deep for this presentation, all right? It acts as a shock absorber cushioning the brain and the regeneration of the brain during sleep may depend on CSF circulation. Super important stuff here, guys. There's about 90 to 150 milliliters in adults and one of our fascial maneuvers directly stimulates this area, all right, to help everything move again. So if it's stuck, we get it going. Conditions of the fascia. Number one, adhesions. Adhesions are felt as pain in the muscle they are contained in. All right, so we look at this picture. We have stars which indicate adhesions in the chest. You're going to have pain in your chest. Trigger points. Trigger points are felt as pain in a joint, typically, coming from the muscle, okay? So the fascia and the muscle tissue gets trigger points. And what it does is it's kind of like wireless pain. It sends pain into a joint. So you press on an area in your muscle tissue, and then all of a sudden you start to feel that same familiar pain in your joint. This is a shift, okay? If you're looking at this person, the lines are straight. Look at how off it is by his Adam's apple and his neck, all right? All of his tissue is moving up and to his left shoulder. You see how crunched his left trap is and you see how open his right trap is. So this is a shift, yes, fascia can do this. It's moving bone, it's moving organs, it's moving everything up into the left side of this gentleman. This is a tilt, okay? You can even look at how his shirt is aligned and his sunglasses, everything's tilting to the right. The right shoulder is normal height, the left shoulder is high, okay? So that will create problems with the structure, back pain, leg pain, knee pain, hip pain. This is a rotation. We can see how this person's left glute is high, all right? And the right glute is low. So what's happening? the right hip flexor is getting tight and rotating the pelvis. Not good, especially when we're looking at back pain. Other anatomical considerations are compartments. All right, we're looking at a compartment of the lower leg here, the two lower leg bones, and then muscles. You can see how fascia creates compartments within an appendage. 
this is a piece of beef, all right? The picture on the left is not as magnified as the picture on the right, but once again, you can see all these little compartments, all right, in the beef, and then the picture on the right, you can see how fine that fascia is, the webbing and the structures that are created as fascia. This is another one depicting the compartments, okay? How one large muscle group is wrapped in fascia, then all the smaller subsets of muscle groups are wrapped in fascia, same thing with the blood vessels. Then the smaller pieces of muscle are wrapped in fascia all the way till you get down to one single muscle fiber that's wrapped in fascia, okay? This is how deeply everything is interconnected. So do you think a foam roller is really getting down to those deep layers and opening stuff up? Not a chance. Here we have lines, Thomas Myers, all right? He did, uh, I think, close to 60 cadaver dissections. And uh, he found that there were linear and rotational lines in the human body connected by fascia. So right here, he has the uh, gastroc, the hamstring, the lower back muscles. And then if you look, the right side of this cadaver's skull still has the thick pad of fascia on it. All right, so you're literally connected, literally from your foot all the way down, all the way up to your head. Here's another different picture on the left-hand side, little bit better looking, fresher muscle, okay? But that goes from the bottom of your foot to your calf, to your hamstring, underneath the glute, to the back muscles, all the way up to the back of the head. The one on the right contains your trapezius muscles, your deltoid, all right, muscles that cross over your elbow, down into your forearm, and then your finger extensors. So everybody out there that has carpal tunnel, right, the doctor will go in and they'll cut the fascia surrounding the wrist and all of a sudden everything can expand and breathe, all right? This is showing a little bit different picture. Now, when you're sitting at a desk typing, you're gonna have your shoulders elevated so you'll be using your traps. Your deltoid will be elevated so you'll be using your shoulder. Your elbow is bent and your forearms are, forearm muscles are being used, all right, extensively. So does it make any sense? It sounds kind of barbaric just to go in there and cut the fascia of the wrist, right? I mean, why don't we try to loosen some of this tissue up, okay, in order to get that carpal tunnel to go away? Here's something very interesting, and what you need to understand is that our first three maneuvers that we do, we do a lot of work with our tongue. Why? Because your tongue is literally connected all the way down to your foot. All right, tongue is a muscle. We forget this. So the tongue is connected to the esophagus, the lung, the diaphragm, the hip flexors, the lower back muscles, the pubic symphysis, which is right in the middle of your pelvis, your iliacus, another hip flexor. Then we get to the big beefy part, which is your hamstring, your kneecap, so your popliteus, which is a small muscle behind your knee, the flexor digitorum longus, which is a perineal muscle, and then down into the foot, the plantar fascia. Guys, I mean, we're connected from our tongue all the way down to our foot. Does it make any sense to kind of take care of this stuff? Well, I'm gonna show you how. Here's another depiction of the compartment and how your leg, your leg muscles, your entire leg group of muscles are wrapped in fascia. All right, we got the TFL, the IT band there, and you can see they're separated on the picture on the left. Well, when we put them in the body on the right-hand side, they're, they're connected. Everything's connected. Everything is wrapped and connected by fascia. Psychophysiosomatic considerations. Content from my Human Garage Fascial Maneuver Coaching Certification. We are biohydraulic balloons. 
All right, Gary says that there are three compartments to us. My upper arm, my lower arm, my hand. Okay, and then we look at my head, my upper body, and my legs. And then we look at my upper leg, my lower leg, and my foot. And what is going on is pressure changes. Constant changes in pressure between these balloons. Okay? Perception is the ruler of the body. Your thoughts, emotions, hormones, stress, and tension all respond instantaneously to changes in perception. In other words, perception has the ability to change your entire physiology, which is characterized by epigenetics. All right? Now, let's think about this for a second. Let's say you just found out you won the lottery, Powerball. $600 million coming your way after taxes, of course. You are extremely excited, elated. I mean, like you're just tingling with joy. All of a sudden, you get a phone call, and there's somebody on the other end saying that your mother died. All right? And what's going to happen then? Your joy is going to stop. You're going to be stricken with grief. And then the person on the phone says, oh, Joel, I'm sorry. I I'm supposed to be calling John. So this isn't your mom, right? What would happen? I mean, you would go back to elation again, right? And all of those feelings would be whirling around your body. Okay, so this is what I mean when I spoke earlier talking about how our perception of the world literally leads to the health of our body. Literally leads to the health of our body. The body feels, the brain interprets, and solves. All input is information that comes into the body as a feeling, what I just said. The brain uses sight, smell, touch, taste, hearing, and past experience to interpret the feeling. The brain calculates what actions to take next and how to solve problems that arise in the body. So everything's working together. The key concept that I want you to understand today, fascia is awareness, all right? It doesn't mean that you can't ever get angry. It just means that you need to be aware that the anger has to dissolve. You can't wake up every day being angry about something that happened 20 years ago, all right? Spite, any sort of contempt or negative emotions, sadness, all of this stuff is sending a poor signal to fascia and you are going to get neuromuscular pain as a result, okay? Now, we have developed a solution to this and I would like to introduce you to fascial maneuvers. You can either do these with me via the computer, I can take you through all 10, or if you come to see me in South Florida, what we, what we do is we start you off with at least three fascial maneuvers, the first three fascial maneuvers. Why? Because they take approximately 80% of your stress out of the body, out of your body. Okay? Now, when you get on the table and we start doing body work or muscular work, your muscles will open up much, much faster, all right? So there are 10 of these maneuvers, and if you are interested in learning how to do them, go ahead, email me, chris at influentialhealthsolutions.com, and we'll set up a consult to uh, see what's right for you. All right, I hope you guys enjoyed the presentation today, and you now know more than probably 99.9% .9 of the population when it comes to what is mechanistically true in the human body when we incur pain.